Hello my quilting family. We're here to uh, today to talk to you about pin basting and how to pin baste in a small space. And I, I don't have uh, the room in my house to lay out a large quilt on the floor and I, I don't lay out stuff on floors anymore. I'm not able to do that. So what I have to do is I have to figure out how to pin baste in a small space. So first what you're going to need is you're going to need a quilt top and this is a charity quilt. You're going to need batting that fits, and that's important, batting that fits, and also backing. Now I, I uh, we had other backing picked out for it but it was too short. So, so we've got some backing and I've pieced my backing down the center so that it, it'll, it's going to be big enough for the quilt. We need some safety pins. Basically, I have two kinds of safety pins. I have the great big ones and the little ones that are curved. So today we're gonna work with these because I can find them and I don't know where the other ones are. And we need binder clips and they're the big ones and I'll explain to you in a minute why they're the big ones. Uh, old, re old kitchen table that's been repurposed and these binder clips fit on the side. This is such a simple way of doing stuff. So let's come on in and I'll show you how to get this done. Okay, so we're at the table and we're going to lay out our, our uh, backing fabric. Now I've had to piece this down the middle and because it's a directional fabric, I've tried to get all the ladies that are carrying jugs going the same way. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this fabric with the good side down, right? And that way you get to see that seam here. And we're just going to pull it over so it overlaps about two inches on all, on all sides, on these two sides here, way down here. Okay, now we're going to take our binder clip, all six of them, because that's all you need. So I'm going to clip like two inches from this side down and about two inches from this side and, oh, okay, hang on, that's, and I'm going to try and make sure that, that those lines look parallel and there's about the same amount of, of uh, top and there isn't. So I'm just going to move it just slightly. I'm going to get my cameraman to put the three down on that side. And just gently give it a, a pull. So make sure that I have my two inches on this side here, right? So. Now we want to pin them, or like basically clip it in place. Pull, pull that corner, pull that corner. Ugh. Okay, there, now pin it so it, it's, okay, pin it in the, in here, there. And, okay, where did this one go? Oh. And now we're gonna pin, so when we have two on the long sides and one on each end, so now we're going to put our batting down. Now, on batting, there's a bumpy side and a smooth side. The smooth side goes up. And this is also cut oversized, which is okay. So I'm going to put the rough side down. And again, we only want about two inches over on the this side, this side and this side for now, right? Because we know it's oversized. So what we do, okay. So now we just move our clips to clip this in place. There. And we're gonna get the cameraman to do the far end. Just making sure it's smoothed out as best we can. I usually don't worry about too much about smoothing out stuff because there. 
that one. Because usually I quilt it to death and then I wash it before I give it to a charity. So there we go. I just make sure that that seam kind of lies flat. Okay. Now we take our top. And what we're going to do is we're going to take it and just have it just fall right at the edge of the table. So the edge of the quilt here is falling right at the edge of here. And this is on the edge. The top part here is right on the edge. So now we're just going to put our bow clips in place. Okay. Okay, and let's smooth this out the best we can. Oops, this, yep. Yeah. There it is. And there's a little bubble here. So we just keep working the fabric until the bubble's gone. Now I have overhang on two sides, which is okay because at least I've got a big portion of this quilt perfectly flat without too many bubbles. Now comes what I call the fun part. We're gonna take a few of these and I'm just gonna sit on, and just put down a few pins. Now, this, the, the batting does stick to the fabric, right? So, you know, like some people, they, they pin base, like the size of their fist, right? Well, you don't have to pin base that tight to have it smooth, right? But you do want certain things like the corners held in place. And I would go about every third row. Now, because I'm going to use a stitch in the ditch for this, I don't want to be crossing my ditch. Like I don't want to be pinning like this where I'm crossing the line that I'm going to be sewing over. So I'm just going to pin it along here and every, I don't know, leave two rows in between. You know, you don't have to be that precise. Oh look, I got bunnies. Again, I have bunnies. So. Now, like I say, I'm going to go a little big. I'm going to throw caution to the wind and go a little big on this. Instead of quilting it too, or like pin basting it too tight. Because this is sticking and it's very smooth. So I just, what I'll do is I'll pin baste all of this. And then I'll show you what we do next. So we finished pin basting this part that's already been on the table and we've removed our binder clips for the side. So what we're going to do is gently pull this along so we can get the other half of this quilt done. Now what we're going to do is just pull it far enough so that we can quickly baste it. And we're just going to pull it to the other end, right? So here's where we end. I know it's kind of off camera, but there's where we end. So we're going to make sure that we've got enough batting and backing and everything behind. It looks good. So we're going to start smoothing this out. Now you can feel ripples and bubbles underneath. So what you're going to do is there you go. And that looks pretty flat. Oh, okay. So, so now we're just going to we're just going to continue pinning and then we'll we'll just continue pinning this area now and then we'll come back and show you how to pin base the rest. Okay, we're done pin basting this area. So now we're going to remove our clips, our binder clips, and we're just going to pop them over this area. And now we're gently going to pull and following this line here. We're gently just going to move it over as far as it's going to go. Oops. There we go. Let me get the binder clips there. And we're going to make sure we have good coverage and no bubbles. 
There we go. So let's let's get this stretched just a bit. It's not there's not a lot left to do here. Okay. So what we want to do now is we're pin basting right to the edge over here. So here we're gonna make sure we've straightened out all the bubbles, got all the little things out, and you can like I say, you can definitely feel them. And sometimes you might have to reach under and just pull a little bit just to get stuff smoothed out. Take that off. Again, you got a bubble right here. Okay, now, now put it on. And there we go. Now we'll finish pinning this and that, that far last corner is left to do. Okay, we finished another section. So what we're going to do is remove the binder clips and we've got that one last little corner to do. So now we're just going to move this down, oops, until we see that far edge. And we're going to start smoothing it out right away. And any kind of pulling or if you need to pull from the under things, don't pull too hard because that's also sometimes can create a pucker. And that's it. So next we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to trim this. Okay, so now we're just going to take our binder clips and put them in the jar because we finished the pin basting part of the pin basting. So what I also do is I always try and make sure that I've ironed beforehand. And sometimes ironing, you know, like you can iron out puckers, but you know, so all, all it needs to be is flat because by the time I'm finished over quilting it, it'll be, it'll be fine. So what we're going to do is come over here and I'm going to grab my shears. Now I work on the part with the excess, right? So my shears come out and all I'm going to do is leave just a little bit. This goes along very quick. And none of this, this gets thrown out by the way. I make franken batting and I will make strips out of the backing or squares depending on how much I have. And now, oh, and now we're going to go this way across. Oops, oops, it would be good to get that backing. And you're just going to go through all of the layers. Now, with this, I wouldn't leave it like an L. I would go through and just cut so that this is straight. And then I've got one piece now taken off. And basically what you're doing is removing the excess fabric that you don't need. So you don't have to struggle with the weight of this. Right? So the batting is going to be made into Franken batting. And that's a really good size chunk. Or it could be used for table runners or whatever. But mostly I make Franken batting. And that's it. We're done. And ta-da! We have a finished pin basted quilt ready for quilting. All that extra fabric has been cut off. So now the only thing we have to do is just to make sure, because this has happened to me, is just to make sure we haven't got any real big bubbles in the back. That we got all of the bubbling and rippling and possible puckers out. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to turn this upside down and just make sure you haven't got any ripples. So we might have a, a wee ripple right here because it's it, it shows a little puckering. So what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly take out that pin and we're just going to massage this out and pin it again just to see whether or not it worked. Yeah. And it's lovely. Actually, yeah, this is this has come out really well. I don't see any big puckers anywhere. So we're gonna this it's always important to examine the back of your quilt for that kind of thing. Because you don't want to be, you know, 90% done with your quilting and then go. Oh, the back's all puckered. Oh, no. So the next thing we're going to see on this quilt 
is stitch in the ditch. This is the first and easiest way to do quilting your quilt tops, right? And this is a really easy way to, to learn how to do this is by doing a jelly roll race. Um, I had done this for, um, to demonstrate on a, for a student and now it's going to charity. So I can either just stitch in the ditch and be done or I can do other things. But what we're going to do is we're going to try and do stitch in the ditch. So come on back next week and we'll show you how to stitch in the ditch. Okay, I hope you have a wonderful week. I am so glad you came back to see what we were doing today. Um, we can hardly get wait to get through and start all those UFOs that we've been doing for charities. I'm kind of excited. So, anyways, you take care. Have a grand week. Bye! If you have questions about what you saw in this video, or you have ideas for for content or something you want to see us do, please put those comments in the description below. But also while you're there, like, share and subscribe with your friends. That would really help us out. Okay, I want to thank you and have a great day.